American housing is in crisis. Right now, up to 12 million Americans are behind an average of $5,800 on rent and risk eviction. With eviction moratoriums soon to expire, we're facing an unprecedented wave of evictions and foreclosures that will crash straight into millions of struggling families across the country. But the truth is, this crisis didn't begin with the pandemic. In fact, housing has been in crisis for a very long time. Even before the pandemic, in places like New York or Los Angeles or San Francisco, median rents for even one-bedroom apartments could approach $2,500 a month or more. About a third of people in Los Angeles spend a majority of their income on housing. In New York City, about 20% of all renters pay most of their income to their landlord. And in my district, Astoria, about a quarter of residents have to spend most of their paycheck on rent. And the crisis isn't just an you make more money than these landlords by taking advantage of 14 year olds. How can you be so hypocritical? Yeah, dude. Am I taking advantage of you right now? Is that what's going on? Are you being taken advantage of? Answer chatter. Is that what's going on? Am I taking advantage of you? Yes. Oh, well here, let me help you. Idiot. <laughs> My man said yes. Like, he's, he's so fucking smooth brain. He's like, yes, you are taking advantage of me currently. By what? Being so fucking hot that you can't stop? You have to, you can't look away. You're like, dude, fuck, man. I'm sorry. You're just too fucking attractive. I can't stop. Can't stop watching you. I, I need to, but I can't. Fuck. Take my money. Oh, there you go. I helped it. I helped you. It's in big cities. In 95% of all U.S. counties, workers making the minimum don't make enough to afford a one-bedroom rental on their own. The Harvard Center for Housing Studies warns of a new normal for housing in the United States, in which nearly half of all renter households spend almost a third of their income on rent. That's why even before the fallout from the coronavirus started to hit, more than half a million Americans nationwide were already homeless, millions more on the brink of losing their housing, and countless families struggling every month to make ends meet. At the root of all of this suffering is the fact that in this country, housing is treated as a commodity, not- The only motherfuckers I take advantage of are those who come in here to hate watch and don't actually fucking uh, buy a $5 a month subscription or use their Twitch Prime on here for free. To avoid the fucking top of the hour ad breaks, okay? And yes, it's not top of the hour. It's at the middle of the hour right now. But I totally forgot to fucking run the ad break. So I'm going to run it right now. Um, because at the top of the hour, there's a 60 second ad break, which I totally fucking forgot to run. And if you don't want to be taken advantage of uh, by having to watch a fucking ad, but you can if you want to, you should subscribe for $5 or you should subscribe for free with a Twitch Prime if you have one. Or you should use an ad block, uh, or you should use a VPN. These are the methods. Twitch Prime being the free one out of all of them, at least, or the most effective one out of all of them. So um, here's the one minute ad break. Now, all it's actually pretty great though. If you are so fucking silly that you won't use any of the any of the methods that I've suggested, and you still have to like watch a fucking ad that, uh, because you're hate watching, then you know. I feel good about that. I don't give a fuck. Thank you for giving me the, the money. <laughs> Not a right. It's a consumer product, just like clothes or cars that private businesses can sell on the market to make a profit. And if someone isn't able to pay, either because their landlord raised their rent or because they can't work for one reason or another, they're not able to stay in their homes. If they're lucky, they can live with friends or family or maybe in transitional housing for a bit. But for a lot of people, they have nowhere else to go and they end up sleeping on the streets. In December 2019, the number of people sleeping in homeless shelters in New York reached 19,000 people, an all-time high. 100,000 New York City students are homeless. That's more than 10% of the entire student population. Why don't these fucking kids get a job, dude? Disgusting. I mean, seriously. Ugh. Pick yourself up by your bootstraps, children. Why do so many people end up homeless? It's not because there aren't enough homes to go around. There are plenty of empty homes. No, it's because housing people is not the primary goal of developers or landlords. Their goal, simply put, is to make a profit. 
and it's much more profitable to build luxury apartments for the rich than decent homes for the poor. This gives us a big shortage of homes for ordinary working people. For every 100 households that are extremely low income, there are only 36 affordable and available homes. As a result, we have plenty of housing for the rich, but poor and working class people don't have nearly enough on the market. So we have people scrounging to make ends meet or sleeping on the streets right below luxury condos and uninhabited apartments. This is a terrible way to organize a housing market. It might be profitable for landlords and developers, but it's not efficient or beneficial for the rest of society. In fact, housing doesn't have to be seen as a market at all. In other countries, housing is considered a fundamental right, like education or healthcare. Yeah, well, them other countries are pussies, brother. What the fuck do you mean? Yeah, guess what those countries don't have that we do? Call freedom, look it up! Call freedom, goddammit! Freedom down the street! Fuck you! That means the government goes to significant lengths to guarantee everyone has a home, and the market plays a much smaller role. My mom knew that I was gonna have Cutie Cinderella on today for the purchasing of uh, furniture and literally intercepted it. She's here right now. I hope to, of course, make me my chicken tendies, mom, right? No. I don't know. Okay, I don't know, but anyway, just listen. Uh, no, she's gonna be here. She's just late. She's in traffic. She literally came because she wants to be a part of the furniture buying process. She can't help herself. She's gonna suggest a lot of plants to purchase. What's up? Nah. And I'm streaming. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay. I don't know. Ona bana niye sorusun bilmiyorum. Oh, that's fair, dude. Furniture lasts a long time. Be nice to Anne. Okay, yeah, I know. Well, Anne is going to make me my chicken tendies now, I think. distribution of housing. So let's hop across yes, the pond is, right? about 100 years back in time to take a look at just one example of how oh an alternative God. housing model got started in beautiful Red I'll Vienna. I'll die. I'll literally die. I'll die. I'll die of starvation if you don't make me food. You want me to die? Your favorite son. You really want your favorite son to die? She's not answering. She has no she has no answers for this. She doesn't want to admit it. Anne. Come on, come on. Please. Please. Oh, you're going to talk to them while I make the tendies. Oh, you're going to stream while I do. Wow, you really are invested in this whole, like. Oh, my God. Hassan is making that house drama so much worse with the chicken nuggy whining. LSF Topos for sure. At the end of the First World War, the Austro-Hungarian Empire collapsed, leaving behind a number of successor states, including modern-day Austria, home to the former imperial capital of Vienna, the fifth largest city in the world. Despite being the seat of an empire, the chaos of the war and decades of neglect had left the working class of Vienna in desperate circumstances. Inflation was rampant, jobs were scarce, social services were non-existent, and hundreds of thousands of people were crammed into decaying tenements where overcrowding, disease, and violence were rampant. So it's no surprise that in 1919, at the first elections ever held in Austria where all adult citizens could vote, the Social Democratic the problem with the, there are so many vacant houses that is most of this in rural areas. Number one, it's pretty difficult to move people to places they don't want to, even if it's vacant. And two, people don't stay in place at all times. Okay. Vacant houses are a problem, but that's not the only, the only solution. Okay. I'm an advocate for more housing, building more housing, except... The very same people that are YIMBYs or the very same people that want to deregulate zoning and deregulate housing also refuse to acknowledge that like whenever there are allotments for new housing, it's always luxury condominiums. Okay. 
We never make affordable housing. We never make public housing. That's not like a thing that we do. And I say this as someone who is literally experiencing this in Los Angeles. Go to downtown LA. Parties swept into power at the municipal level on the promise of dramatic social and economic reform. And they delivered. The new government of Vienna implemented a huge range of services, including public health care and public child care. They built high quality hospitals. I don't understand. I guess it was because it was post World War One. What like we should have invaded immediately. Like if America existed at the time and had like, I mean, it did, but it had uh, the same kind of interest at the time as we do. Like these are technically considered land reforms. You know what I mean? It's a uh, time to fucking invade, baby. Whenever. Whenever, uh, you know, a country decides to do this in Latin America, we go and we uh, invade them, so. Or at least, like, you know, we arm the fucking guerrillas to violently overthrow the government. Oh, wait, we were doing similar things at that exact same time. Shit, that's right. ...schools and recreational facilities. But their crowning achievement was an ambitious program of social housing, what Americans call public housing that began in 1923 and saw 60,000 new apartments constructed in the first year of its existence, built by the government and financed by taxes on the rich. But these weren't the kinds of apartments you might picture when you think of public housing in the United States. Drab, high rises, plagued by chronic neglect and underinvestment. Residents could enjoy leafy courtyards, wide open spaces, and plenty of natural light. They had shared laundries, state-of-the-art kitchens, food co-ops, bathhouses, pharmacies, lecture halls, schools, and swimming pools. Okay, I'm starting to get triggered. I don't want to watch this. This is like, this is the exact same fucking energy as the Canada gun law video. Like, it's, it's like hurting my brain. I just like, it makes me so fucking mad, dude. I get, I, I get so envious and so upset when I see stuff like this. Like, it's it just like, like, why can't we have nice things, okay? Yeah, remember this morning when I was talking about how Americans love, like, resorting to weird, because they're so, like, invested in American uh, exceptionalism that they, like, start resorting to, like, weird fucking counters uh, and engage in helicopium. Thank you, Cash App, for the 69 gifted subs. That's what's happening to me right now. I'm like, well... Uh, they're fucking, uh, you know, they're communists. Uh, America actually is still the number one uh, country in the world. And uh, I don't want to see this because it's actually tight that we have a uh, fuckload of homeless people everywhere. And uh, it's normal and good. Um, actually, the Austrian government is uh, failing. And also their economy is in a state of disrepair because, you know, they have houses for people. Fuck you. I understand how you feel. I've seen Long Island turn into a gentrified Main Street USA type of towns with unaffordable apartments. Yeah, public housing with pools will spoil children. I mean, why do the poor get to be in the pool? Uh, that's fucking bullshit. These apartments were designed to be both beautiful to look at and beautiful to live in, fostering a sense of shared community among the people who lived there. And the best part was that because the city didn't have to worry about making a profit, just about paying off their maintenance costs, these homes were both much nicer and much cheaper than what workers had previously known. In 1926, the average rent in Viennese social housing was about just 4% of a month. By the way, uh, notice how, notice how in Vienna, social housing didn't mean that they were shitty houses and instead like, you know, poor people could also have access to the same kind of amenities that rich people had access to. And that they could also get fucking... I, I, I'm not even going to mention the 4% wage yet. Hold on. My, the point I'm trying to make is that uh, socialism means bad house or socialism means no house is fucking idiotic, okay? Social housing, public housing does not necessarily mean that you need to live in fucking... Uh, and grovel in the dirt, okay? Monthly wage. Also, 4% of your monthly wage. Fuck you. I mean, seriously, fuck yourself. Fuck you, Vienna. Fuck you, Austria. It's actually one of the nicest fucking cities I've ever been to in my entire life. But that's besides the point. Fuck everyone living in Austria and fuck Vienna, okay? 
I say that not as an Ottoman, but as someone who has visited and saw how beautiful the city is and uh, are now upset that you only have to pay 4% of your fucking monthly wage for the rent in the social housing. The Ottomans should come back and liberate Vienna. The first 15 years after Austrian independence saw its capital transform from a symbol of urban blight into a beacon of socialist governance. It became known as Red Vienna, after the official color of the socialists who had pioneered these changes. And even though Red Vienna fell in 1934 when the country was seized by fascists, who did what they could to roll back social housing, that commitment to good, cheap housing remained after the Second World War. Today, an astonishing 62% of all city residents live in social housing, with the average monthly- Can you imagine, dude? Holy fucking shit! Fuck! 62% living in government housing. Fuck! Monthly rent falling somewhere between $400 and $600 a month, with subsidies for lower income tenants. That is a fraction of what people in America pay. Unlike in the United States, where public housing is treated as a worst case way to house the very poor, Vienna's social housing residents are extremely diverse. Everyone except the top fifth of the population is eligible to live in social housing. This means there's broad appeal across many segments of society, which creates the foundation for its political popularity. That is how the majority of people in Vienna enjoy something that's considered almost utopian here in New York. Affordable housing that isn't just cheap, but desirable. Housing that isn't just four walls and a roof, but a real home with a sense of stability, safety, and community built in. Now, of course, this is only one example of an alternative framework for housing. And Vienna has not fully removed housing from the domain of the market. Residents still pay part of their earnings and rent to cover operational costs, and a sizable chunk of the population lives in private housing. But it's an actually existing alternative that shows us what a step toward a better I don't know. A lot of this, uh, you know, took a long way to tell me that they have no freedom, brother. That's what it told me. I'm just saying. America won't ever get this, if I'm honest. Yeah, of course not. And that, this, we will never have this. Do you want to know why? We will never have this because of the CNN article that we just fucking read, okay? Because when we're talking about tenant protections... That's not even a matter of consideration. We're only talking about the landlords and how much money they're losing. Because, like, landlording is seen as, like, one of the few ways that, like, upper middle class folks can actually generate income, additional income for themselves. And, like, uh, you know, get themselves out of that, uh, of that hole of, like, constantly being subjugated to a lifetime of, of debt, slavery, and, and wage cuckery. Okay? That's it. better world could look like. If we want to end the housing crisis, the solution has to be moving toward the full decommodification of housing. In other words, moving away from the status quo in which most people access housing by purchasing it on the market and toward a future where we guarantee high quality housing to all as a human right. So how can we do it? We can start by making sure people who access housing on the private market have ironclad protections against abuse and exploitation. But to go further, toward the Vienna model, we'll have to go beyond the market. We can establish community land trusts to gradually buy up housing on the private market and convert it to community ownership. We can give tenants a right of first refusal to buy out their landlords when buildings go up for sale. Yep. And we can fully commit to a new era of social housing, ending subsidies for luxury housing development and using our wealth to build beautiful, high quality social housing projects that offer good homes and strong communities to everyone. We won't decommodify housing overnight, but we know what we have to do and we have history to guide us. And we know how we'll get there through a move. How is this motherfucker smiling in the end of this video, dude? I've been white knuckling and through half of this shit. Meanwhile, meanwhile, these dudes are just like, he's like smiling about a better tomorrow. We're not getting a better tomorrow, dude. We're not. That's never going to happen, dude. Because, hey, guess what? Decommodifying housing implies that you are working deliberately to destroy an entire sector, okay? Decommodification means that the government is taking deliberate and active efforts to make it so that landlording is not a feasible industry at all, that you can't uh, maintain 
home ownership of multiple properties and uh, rent that out to other people. That's what decommodification means. Okay? That's what that means. It will never happen in a bourgeois, capitalist, late-stage capitalist country like America where the government's sole purpose is to uphold that, that, that system of inequality and subjugation and normalize it and do everything they can to continue that oppression, okay? Only drip-feeding you social safety nets when it comes to a point of, like, you know, people are literally dying on the streets. Only drip-feeding you a little bit of social safety nets so that you don't fucking revolt when you recognize the chains that bind you, okay? So that's never gonna happen. Let's be fucking real. One can dream, though racial working class organizing for the better world we know is possible. And we've already begun. I'm Zahran Mamdani, Assemblyman for New York's 36th Assembly District in Astoria, Queens, for the Gravel Institute. Okay, the Medicare for All isn't going to happen either, so let's just give up. No, 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 no. Of course not. Of course not. Of course not. Of course not. We should still advocate for these things, and we should do whatever we can. We should bring in, uh, we should bring in socialists, to uh, uh, local government positions.